Hi, my name is Sasha. Welcome to my channel. In this video, we are going to discover how to prevent unauthorized access to sensitive data on your Azure SQL database or SQL Server. But before I start with the demo, I'd like to give you a brief introduction to a SQL Server or SQL database feature, which is called Dynamic Data Masking. It's a policy-based security feature that hides the sensitive data in a result set of a query over designated database fields while the data in the database is not changed. If this is your first time here and you want to learn more about advanced analytics, machine learning and cloud computing, start now by subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss anything. And now let's directly dig into the demo. From my past Azure step-by-step -step videos, I have still a logical SQL Server left, but what I need is a newly created SQL database. So let's click on the plus sign, click on SQL database, and I selected already my subscription as well as the resource group I'm using here. So let's give that database a name and pick the SQL Server I created. I don't need any elastic pools, but I want to change that to the cheapest version. And in, a, in the additional settings, I'd like to restore that from a sample database. So I've got them data to protect. The collation is of course fixed in that case. I don't want to start any advanced data security. Don't want to specify any tags. And here we go. While this is deploying, I also want to create a storage account. So let's click on the plus again, select storage account. Again, I've got my subscription resource group already chosen. And I want to give that storage account a name. Let's call it Azure Step-by-Step -step Storage and pick the same region then the SQL Server, which is West Europe. And I'm using that storage account to import some additional data. So standard is fine, V2 is also fine, but I want to switch to, to local redundant storage because I just need three copies in one region. I don't need any additional replication, no special networking settings. And I'll keep that also with the default and the advanced settings. And last but not least, no tags. And after reviewing that, I click on create. So that is deployed. Let's go to the storage account, to the Plop store, and create a container called HR data, which holds my employee data, which I want to import. Click on OK. And after that has been created, I want to upload a CSV file. Let's pick that file from my local storage. And I downloaded a CSV file from Kaggle, and the link will be again in the description if you want to download that as well. So I'm picking the core data set from HR and uploading that to a storage account. So that's uploaded. Something else I need to access that from the SQL server. I want to not directly give all access rights, but in this case, want to create a shared access signature. So only temporary access rights, which I restrict only to the blob service and to the container and object level. I just want to be able to only read that, start now and I just need the access for, I don't know, two hours. No restriction on the IP address and HTTPS only. And I want to sign that with my key one and generate that access signature. And here we go. That's the SAS token, which I need. And I copy that except for the question mark and switching to my Azure Data Studio to import everything now. And here's already my demo database. And I prepared already two SQL notebooks, which I post again on GitHub and share the link in the description. And switching to the first one, I of course want to create a master key to encrypt the security relevant information on the server side. Up next, I want to add my shared access signature, which I just pasted in from what I called from the portal. And then I need to specify the location to my storage. It's called Azure Step by Step Storage and the container name was data. And then I need to create some additional schema, as well as one additional table, which holds my employee data. And again, in here, you find the link from the data and import those. So 201 rows have been imported. And I want to add some additional data, for example, social security number, generate some dummy ones. And let's have a look at the first 10 rows. So I've got employee name, employee number, zip code, date of birth, citizen status, and so on and so on, as well as my auto-generated social security numbers. Since I used the AdventureWorks data, I also want to add a column called credit card. So let's add that to the customer table. And again, generate some fake credit card numbers. 
So looking at the tables, I've got my newly created employee table and the one from the AdventureWorks demo database. So let's go back to the portal and to the SQL Server to show you the features which are already implemented in the portal itself. So I'm switching to my database. And on the left-hand side, you find in the security section a menu point called Dynamic Data Masking. So I'm clicking on that. And now it's querying my tables. See that I've got some tables. And for example, I want to mask the credit card column and the date of birth column. And let's set those to, to currently. It's picking the default function, but I want to switch the credit card one to the setting credit card value. As you can see, there are several ones. Default, credit card, email address, numbers currently not possible because it's a string field and a custom string. So let's pick first the credit card number, click on update, and then on save. Let's switch back to Azure Data Studio to see how that looks in code. And I prepared already a second notebook. Executing that query of the system views will show that I already secured those two columns, but I want to add some additional ones and show you that how that looks. It's just an alter table, alter column, the name of the column and of the table, of course, and then add a mask, and then I can specify what kind of mask function. For the pay rate, I would like to add a default, which sets everything to zero. For the age, I'm picking a random number between 18 and 64. And for the email address, I pick special ones like email address, as well as for the social security, I'm defining a special pattern, which has no pre-shown values. I'm just masking this one and just show the last four. So it's kind of a left and right function, as well as some predefined characters in the middle part. Let's execute that as well and have a look at what I've done. So I'm currently have those six columns already masked. And want to create a dummy user and give that dummy user select rights on those two tables. And when I'm trying to view the data, I can see that I've got some default values for date of birth and for the pay rate and as well as that my social security number is masked and for the date this is really a random number so if I execute that again you see that the numbers are changing so it's really randomized from the customer table I've got of course the customer name and the, def the special types of credit card and email which is currently completely masked so I'm seeing only from the email address the first the at and the dot com the last four same for credit card, everything is masked except for the last four digits. And to be able to grant a user the right to see the, or the application in the end, to see the correct data, I can grant the unmasked right to that user. And then I'm querying the data again. And after, after that, of course, because it's just a demo, I'll, I'm revoking that unmasked right. And in this case, the user can see the correct data, which is in those two tables. So that should be it for today. I hope you liked it. If yes, please give me a thumbs up and I also add some recommended further videos in this section. And if you've got some additional ideas what I could create next and show you next, please do me a favor, use the comment section below and add your ideas in there. So thanks and see you soon.